All right, we are here to ta do commentary about the St. Lotus Presents number six that we just had last week. Uh, I'm Mark Kederberg. With me is joined. Kevin Freeman. And Kevin, you got to actually run this event. This is uh, obviously you've run these before, but this was a big one that you ran kind of on your own. And it w what's unique about this draft that makes people want to tune in? Um, this draft was eight people that have never done a VRD before. And most of their playing is like kitchen table commander, maybe a pre-release. About it. Yeah, so this so is going to be a little different. Very different perspective. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the first thing to note as we're going to start tuning into draft picks is we're not going to be calling things out as this is a bad pick or this is a really egregiously early pick. It's that's going to be expected. We're dealing with people who have never done this before, and yep. I, I know some people did some pretty intense research though. Like I know um, George was digging pretty deep into yes. the tank of archives beforehand. And I, to speak from experience, Cassidy probably spent 40 hours wow. researching cards for the event. All right. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited. I'm sure we're going to get into who the players are and what kind of things like to draft. I know like people like Benjamin, we came in with uh, with a plan. He was like, I'm going to draft goblins. And he like looked at previous goblins list, looked at the one that Mason ran back in, I think, 2021, maybe 2022, um, and just took that list and said, okay, Fury's been printed. I guess I'll throw that in here. But other than that, he pretty much went with the list as, as it was existing. So well, there, there are a few a few other spicy picks oh. in the last couple of years. I'm excited. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But let's uh, let's dive into it and actually see these picks as they start coming through. And we're using the patented draft presenter, uh, which is going to fly through the first round of picks really quickly. Uh, and then we'll have some breather to talk about these as we go through. So uh, the first few Already picks... though, in the first round, we have something interesting. <laughs> Very interesting, right? Like even Time Vault being early is kind of interesting, but Roger with the Chalice of the Void is exceptionally interesting. Yeah. So the story behind that was he came in with three different ideas for a deck. Yep. And had not decided yet. I was like, I don't want to pick a color, so I'm just going to uh, pick something that's good in any any deck, and he put Chalice. I mean, Chalice is a card that, first of all, isn't good in every deck, but it is one that I think people that are vintage, or like watch vintage, might overvalue because it uh, is so good in vintage when everyone has a full set of power. But in this format, where everyone has probably like one to two zero cost cards, it tends to perform a lot worse, which is why you see it picked um, only in less than mm -hmm. half the drafts and usually pretty late. Uh, other interesting stuff okay. here, the Mox Ruby into Thought Seize is a uh, classic Mason pick, so that makes sense that Benjamin followed that one. Yep. I like Cassidy's start here a lot, and I like George's start here a lot. Yeah, no. <laughs> Outside of Roger taking Chalice, everything's pretty run-of-the-mill stuff you'd expect in the first couple of rounds. Yeah, a Volcanic Island second pick is obviously not ideal. Um but I, I guess, like, starting with Ancestral, you know you're going to be in blue, and Craig's making a statement. Well, Craig's nickname is Is It Craig. <laughs> Funny. So that is not surprising in any way, shape, or form. Yep. Lotus um, Force of Will Ragavan is an interesting start. I don't, it's, those cards can work well together, but it's kind of, it's interesting to see all three of those because they kind of push you in different directions. Like, Black Lotus and Force of Will are usually not yeah. best friends. Yeah. Uh, Sean was also coming into the event planning on playing is it oh, okay so there there were a lot of them yelling at each other for taking cards that they were thinking <laughs> the other one was thinking about i love especially that with them being it's one and two it was great that is pretty excellent uh we also have um it looks like uh an underworld breach is a real early pick here yeah uh Carlos was another player that Came in with a very clear idea of what he wanted to do, and he figured he was going to be able to do it, so he just took his pieces. Yep. I mean, Mana Crypt floating all the way to the second round is honestly pretty pretty nuts for this format, kind of where it's migrated to. Um, seen Streamline for round, round, round three. three. Yeah, that I, th I think we checked, and this is the tied for the latest a Mox has ever gone. Uh, so Mox Pearl at the end of round three is tied with one from back, I think, 2018 or something like that. Uh, and then there's one where it mm -hmm. went one, one pick earlier. But yeah, it's very, very early. Cassidy is saying, I'm going to do unfair tinker shenanigans and making sure nobody steps under Dark Steel Colossus. Yep. I like it. And it, it was a card that we 
figured that we should want to take higher than normal given the crowd. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like a, a lot of these things, like you take a card and you then float everything else till around forty, like kind of an underworld breach and mm -hmm. um, Thassa's Oracle is the classic one, or uh, demonic consultation and uh, and Thassa's Oracle. You can float one or the other. Uh, here, you might not necessarily want to let a painter hang around after you take your grindstone. I like this right. demonic over vampiric for Ben. His deck, uh, his deck is obviously going to be goblins. It's not going to be one that's trying to do cheaty combo things. So I think both of them would prefer the pick that they got, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, demonic and vampiric. I mean, that feels uh, pretty late for those cards. Yeah, I mean. It's not apparently unreasonably not. late. It's round four. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, Demonic has moved down yeah. in the, the list since I've been playing. Then Greg is planting his flag firmly as far as what he wants to do. Yeah, I, I, I stopped watching after, I think, pick 10. But this is one where I saw Pastor Might Splinter Twin. And I'm like, oh, Benjamin needs to take Kiki Jiki immediately because it's so good with his deck. Uh, and I, I think he didn't. He doesn't know the signals well enough to know that that's the way to jump. So I uh, this is one mm -hmm. where just like exposure to other formats where you know the kiki jiki falls into the into the splinter twin decks is one that i mean a lot of these players play a casual commander right it's not they don't have exposure to necessarily what all mm -hmm. those uh competitive combos do and um i know at one point matt did pull off the turn one dark ritual inquisition him nice that's classic it's build your own uh build your own mind twist and still lost that game actually. Yeah, I mean you can't you can't thought seize the top of the deck, right? It's a classic. And that that's what happened is because it was against Cassie and she was able to take her blight steal. I win. <laughs> yep, exactly. That makes sense. Uh, Cassidy going for the walking ballista. I, I'm really liking George's list at this point. I think that he's kind of just like taking the best card that's available. Uh, Snapcaster yeah. Rage might not necessarily be the best, but it is one that. I mean, with Time Walk and with all these counter spells, it's obviously going to be very strong. Yeah. And it, it definitely put in work, work for him throughout the day. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, so Cassidy's saying, yeah. I am Mono Brown. Yes. Don't love this Mana Vault. I don't really know that, what that does in a Goblin's deck. I guess it lets you cast a Rig Leader or something really early. It's, and it's just a yeah. really powerful card. But yeah, no, okay. Cassie's plan coming in was I'm going to play Mono Mud because she was given that advice from someone that she trusts just as far as magic goes so she ran with it yeah uh, that's interesting Armageddon and Ravages of War neither of those have been drafted before in recent era yeah I like this Lion's Eye. If you can't have Black Lotus, it's a pretty good way to uh, work with your Underworld Breach. Mm -hmm. uh, is this the is this the first Planeswalker? Is that the Narset? Yep. Yeah, wild to not see Oko and to not see uh, the rug one, or the red green one. Uh, boo, Minsk and Boo. And, the, and like you were saying, uh, Ben probably should have jumped on Kiki Jiki immediately after Craig took customer the Splinter Twin. Totally. Similarly, I think Minsk and Boo would fit really nicely there. And possibly even Oko. Craig's next pick was Kiki Jiki. Yes, yeah. Wheel of Fortune, uh, nice. Sean Sean saying, I want to be in the Narset Wheels deck. I'm not going to let Carlos get the wheel. Yep. Brainstorm, okay. The This, this is about where I think Brainstorm normally goes. Uh, let's see. 20, uh, yeah, in round 12. Okay, so it's still pretty early, but at some point you have uh, the run in all of the one mana cantrips. Yeah. Roger's just Roger's doing what Roger's going to do here. I feel like that's going to be the trend through this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, he... And the funny thing is, it's clear to what already what he's trying to do. It was not one of the three decks he came in trying to think about. Oh, that's funny. Because the original... Th Three decks he had on his list were Burn, Infect, and Dredge. Oh man, Infect is so much fun. I, I love I love drafting Infect in this format because it's so like there's so many little tiny picks and edges where you can get good value, uh, and then your deck just kind of gets revealed in the last fifteen picks. Um, Ben, we got uh, three yeah, fairies, the second walker, 
the, the one ring is pretty good with mana vault. Yep. So Cassidy is kind of on the um like the two card Monty plan at this point. It says I'm gonna I'm gonna have these combo cards. I'm gonna drop draft them. So far there is a tinker, but other like hopefully um I don't know fabricator other things are gonna come in here. But that's always the problem with two card Monty decks is that you draw one half of two sets of your combos and you don't have anything to do with that. So I'll be looking to see if she finds some of the the tutors. Luckily, Tinker pretty much says draw piece number two. Yeah. Tinker is a tutor, right, for sure. Uh, Teferi, George's deck is still looking bonkers. I think there's, like, I can complain about uh, some pick orders here, but the cards are all very strong. Mm -hmm. Teferi, get, picking up that Teferi this late is ridiculous. That's normally second round pick. And probably it's going to say, like, third or fourth, but, yeah, okay, it says five, but I I would not trust that card to pass around three. Necrogen Mists. Oh my god, my little high school heart is feels so good right now. <laughs> that is wild. Uh, we have Craig pivoting into Kiki Jiki Splinter Twin deck, uh, which obviously steps on Ben's uh, toes a little bit. Um, and we have Craig and Sean just really fighting back and forth in the blue red. Yep. Although it looks like they're taking different. They decided on different routes. Looks like Sean's wanting to do the wheels route. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, there's is Time Twister off the board yet? It's not, right? We are we are still in the Wheel of Fortune camp at this point. Yep. Cool. Yep. But taking Hole Breacher and Nurset, probably leaning into the wheels. Totally. Wheels is a deck that, I mean, we've traditionally not seen be super successful. I don't think that's the fault of the Wheels deck in particular, but I do think it is, uh, it's a hard deck to make work because a lot of times you wheel, and unlike in Vintage where you did a storm off or combo or whatever, um, you don't get to win right away. So, like, you aren't pressured in the same way in the Wheels deck. It almost feels like a compliment yeah. deck, deck as opposed to its own thing by itself. I, I think a lot of times, at least the ones I've seen, people just try and get too cute with it. Yeah, I can see that. Um, it, it is. It feels like you're doing really powerful things, but at the end of the day, you still have to actually win the game. And usually that's not a problem, but with a wheels deck in particular, for some reason, it feels like your opponent gets stuck on one card, but they have two creatures on board, and you just get killed. Yep. I like this polluted delta pick from George. Good discipline. Fetches have been going pretty slowly this time around. Cassidy's deck looks stellar. Doing the big yeah. brown thing. See if the Synod is nice. I like the py Pyroblast grab out of Ben because yeah. there's enough blue players at the table. Absolutely. That having at least one one of them is a good idea. Totally. Since he's dividing top, I don't love as much. Like It's obviously a fine card, but it's not going to synergize with goblins at all. So I don't really see it. Yeah. Uh, Geist is uh, fine. I don't know. Roger stamping blue as a second color with Geist. Yeah, Geist is an interesting reason to pivot into blue. Um, and we've already seen I mean, we've already seen Teferi go. It's maybe, maybe he's going spirits. That'd be sweet. Well, looks like we're starting to hate Bear's shell, mm -hmm. and I don't hate Geist as Saint Trapped in that shell. I think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, we have Ronnie Regisaur as a classic. This is, I feel like this is like casual VRD All Star. It like sets it sets up the Reanimator deck really nicely. It just beats face really fast too. I think it even amongst the season VRD players, I think it's actually pretty underrated. There, there's the Twister. There's Twister. I like that it. Windfall and Twister. Yeah, Sean is going hard in that direction. Uh, I also like the Impact Tremors out of Craig. Just, just because it gives them a way to win without having to attack. Okay, so you make infinite kiki jikis and each of them pings for one. Is that the idea? Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty narrow. I mean, I guess it wins against an Assyrian bridge or something, but it's a pretty narrow thing. See, a set of things it beats. Like it doesn't beat a removal spell, right? Yeah. Like, it's fun. Yeah, it is fun. I'll grant you that. Uh, Birds of Paradise. Okay, so Matt's going into into green, right? We haven't seen anything about that. We saw the jet, obviously, but that was a long time ago. Uh, yeah, picks one and two were Jet Emerald. Yeah. 
But okay, green green birds is a fine reason to step into that. I expect to see abrupt decay come out soon. Yeah. Jitte is a good one for Roger. Ben would have wanted that for sure. Yeah. And I think those are the two decks that want it the most. Yes. Based on where things are going. Totally. I mean, I could see um, this wheels deck. No, yeah, you're right. There's no no that I should really want it. Balance, nice. I like this. I like George going just classic blue white control. Swifty would be very proud. Yeah. And Cassie's just staying in her lane. Yeah, she's uh she's taking a lot of these cards that I don't think anyone else would have taken, but it doesn't hurt at all to have them. Um, I, I guess if there's nothing else she's fighting for, then that seems good. Yeah. Fury is a good pickup. Um, that's a that's one that's super late. Yeah, but at the same time, I don't. I don't think Craig or Sean were going to fight for it. Apparently it's not late. I'm wrong. I just pulled up the stats and yeah, usually in round 13. That seems weird to me. Is this Fury just worse than I think it is? Um, it, based on how how the decks are looking right now, it's not, not as good as it has been in other event, other drafts. Sure. I mean, it shuts down Craig it's pretty hard. It shuts down Roger. Um, but yeah, against Carlos, it does nothing. It gets mad. It doesn't really do anything. That's the thing, though. It doesn't really shut down Craig. Because it doesn't have Flash. That's true. Okay, fair enough. Ral Crackly win. This is the, the little Badger thing? Yeah, that's the new Ral out of uh, Bloomborough. Yeah, excuse me, it's an Otter. Okay. And now, I will say the Frostodon pick out of Sean, I suggested that to him as just a way to laugh at Craig. Just, yeah, it feels like, it seems like they are definitely kind of in their own, in, they seem like they were in their own lanes up until this this round right here, where we suddenly have Ral, Monastery, Swift Spear against Rampage of Ferocid on a Soul Scar Mage. Uh, it seems like they're both but, kind of like pivoting towards each other, which is interesting. I do like his Davriel, though. Yeah, no, it was fun, though, the whole draft listening to Sean and Craig. They were in different rooms for the draft. So they were actually like <laughs> joking and yelling back and forth. Oh, that's funny. And with their picks, with them being seats one and two, it just made it even funnier. Yeah, absolutely. It's always good when you're right next to each other. Dress is a good pickup. That's the the third best of the big three. Mm-hmm. And grief is already gone, right? Or did I miss? Is grief still out? Uh, grief is still on the table, I believe. Okay, I mean, I think grief might be worse than duress in Ben's deck, but I don't know. It's worth considering either way. He doesn't. He's going to be base red, so that's hard. Good spell pierce pickup. George seems to be showing situational awareness. Same thing with swords. Swords over solitude is different than usual. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, um, but I think Roger wants the solitude more. Yeah, and I think. Uh... Well, how many other white cards does George have right now? You've got what? Teferi and Balance? Teferi and Balance. But, I mean, Swords is obviously better for George because it's the Snapcaster Mage there. But, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like for George's opponents, the, the Swords is worse. I don't know. I think it's still making so the right choice. Roger, Roger taking Jace and then Mom. Yeah, the Jace is interesting. Like, that's a double blue commitment. That's a lot. Also, not really doing the thing his deck wants to do if he's going hate bears. It's like Thalia into Jace isn't exactly a sweet combo, you know? Yeah, this is probably it's probably an instance of uh, memory. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Jace used to be incredible. Uh, and Roger hasn't really played a whole lot in the last few years. Yeah. Lotus Petal's great. That's a late Lotus Petal and really good in Carlos' deck. Detective Phoenix is a sweet card. Uh, it has some uh, problems with other cards that empty your graveyard, but it does, I mean, it, you can cast it. It's great. It, it does feed the um, Murktide Regent, though. Okay, yeah, if you have the Murktide in play already, then the gathered evidence is pretty good. That's fair. Grim Lava Dancer like Murktide is just when an instant or sorcery leaves. Oh, yeah, totally. There's there's the second Murktide effect that always happens in Legacy. We're going to beat it for 12. Mm -hmm. Underworld Dreams, man. Thrown back to 2010. It's nice. Pact of Negation out of Carlos. Yeah, it's a good pickup. Um, 
I feel like there's so many counter spells right now that Pact of Negation is good in Doomsday and not much else. Um, but mm-hmm. in a storm deck, you also need to be able to predict your combo, so I get it. Mm-hmm. Sort of light, light shadow. shadow Don't love that one. Like it picks up your small little creatures, but at the point where you can get through with a creature with a sword attached to it, it's kind of like, what are you, what are you really picking up a creature to do? Yeah, and I, the vile. No, I know Cassie. Yes. Took, I know t- Cassie took the fire and ice here simply because Roger said he was going to take it next. Oh yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the sword of fire and ice is the best sword, I think. Uh, obviously, like, I don't know. I think it's I, arguable, I, but I, I think it's. Depending on the day, either Fire and Ice or Feast and Famine. Yeah, Feast and Famine is better in combo-y EDH decks. I feel like in Legacy and kind of the vintage formats, Fire and Ice is the is cleaner. Lava Spur Roots is a good one. Although, you know, Lava Spur Roots have is really good. Cards out of yeah, Lava Spur Roots is really good with uh, a card that hasn't been drafted yet, which is uh, versus Saga. Be pretty nice. And we've got two black cards out of George. Yeah, that's a weird jump into double black and then mind twist. What, do, do you have any like, invisibility from the room why why he went there? I don't, unless it was to try and keep Matt from getting it. Okay. I guess, yeah, Shieldred is really good with a wheel, too. So maybe for Sean? I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. trying to think of, like, what... I don't know. If he... Yeah, but a double double black is a, it's not an easy splash. It's not. The mind twist... Is, is good to take from Matt if you really want to, but yeah, splashing a double black is very hard there. I like the Solitude. I like the Sluster Storm. Past in Flames feels odd to me. Unless Sean's going to be going into Seething Song or something like really stormy that we're not seeing yet. But like, Wheels and Past in Flames aren't exactly best friends. It's, it's probably just like a value, Past in Flames. To be able to recast something again, I guess. But I mean, if you're emptying your graveyard with Merc Tides, Detective Phoenix, and pa- Treasure Cruise, it's not going to be easy to cast that Vast in Flames. I bet Carl's is going to get Yogmoth's Will though, just to. But now it's been signaled. Because <laughs> yeah, Vast in Flames has a has an older brother. Yeah, <laughs> nice. There it is. I love it. Uh, and then the gutter snipe, snipe out of Craig. I know that's just one of his favorite pet cards of all time. Yeah, that's that's one that feels a little cute here. It's kind of like is Craig is Craig a prowess deck or is he a splinter twin deck? I, I, I same thing with Sean is like, is this a wheels deck or is this a like prowess deck? They both kind of feel like they're pivoting into a prowess deck for no real reason. Again, it's pro- probably just muscle memory type thing. Of, sure. Hey, I know these cards are good, and then is it deck? Yeah, I mean, I mean, is it that's like where Wizards push it in the last few years? It totally makes sense. Um, but this is the like the problem. I think it's hard to fit all those cards into a forty card deck. So I think you end up with half of one mm-hmm. of them in the sideboard at the end of the day. I love this Reality Smasher from oh. City. Jace is good if maybe George is pivoting into Reanimator. That makes sense. Jace, uh, and then that would explain the blacks. Splash as well if he goes like Animate Dead, Reanimate. Well, um, Animate Dead's already off the table. Is it? Okay. It's probably just like Snapcaster 2.0. Sure. And it, it does that job fine if you need it to be a sorcery. Reality Theft Smasher, of course, Thought Nasty here comes. Elspeth Knight Errant. That's a nice throwback. Stephen Hagen will love that. <laughs> this is currently getting drafted out in a. Uh, chaos draft that we're doing on st lotus discord where uh you pick i think it's i think it's 10 sets and you can only draft cards in those sets and one of them was uh shards so elspeth's getting drafted there she was a first round that pick. sounds like fun yeah it's really cool Ooh, damnation nice i think the damnation is for roger and ben and not many other people i guess no craig and sean maybe uh... we'll see Cassidy as well. Oh, shoot. Yeah, maybe this is a main deck damnation, actually. Serum Visions. Okay, we're down to the dregs of the cantrips. Good Hydroblast pick. I don't love this whole, like, take... 
one blast every 10 picks that's happening. That feels pretty odd to me. Um, like if it feels like if you want one, you could probably want two. And I don't know. Anticipate definitely Perfect. has better cards that could be in that slot, but I get that this is one that's pretty recent and people are aware of. So compared to something like Impulse. Yeah. Uh, Car- Carnage Tyrant will be fun for George. I like that Carnage Tyrant pick. Uh, I don't know if it's the best version of that card anymore, but when it was printed, it was. And that wasn't that long ago. This card is very powerful. Yeah. Brain Freeze. Carlos is a win con now. We haven't seen any Emmer Holes or anything yet. I don't think Matt's going to do any Shallow Grave nonsense. I don't love this Reverent Silence. I feel like this is a, a, a card that was Mason had because there were uh, because there were like enchantment decks running around the format, and I don't see any uh, I don't see any here that it really is needed for. Yeah, we've got Thorical Combo out of George. That maybe he was probably playing it on that all, all along, so he's taking some good black stuff. That's a reason to pivot black. Okay. Uh, does he have the tutors to justify it? Like, how is he going to actually make this happen? Is it just hoping to draw your entire deck and get to it? Probably. Yeah, see, I feel like this is hard. It's hard to do a two-card Monty thing. Um, and his deck is, like, a very good fair deck. It's kind of like this... I don't think this win condition is needed. Uh, but I get the, I get it. It's yeah. the most powerful combo, uh, arguably, other than uh, Time Vault. There's the Goblin Recruiter, so Ben has signaled it. Metal Worker has been signaled from Cassidy by that Voltaic Construct as well. So that's infinite mana, I think, if, if you have two artifacts in hand. Yep. It's infinite mana for two artifacts, which can make a huge ballista. Yeah. Matt takes Ice Crown Scepter. I have no idea what's happening with the Ice Crown Scepter. Uh, so currently it combines with zero. Oh, no, okay. It combines with Dark Ritual. Uh, that's it, <laughs> but we'll see. I mean, there's plenty of time to pick up some yeah. removal spells or something. I guess, but yeah. So, a, a, a removal spell under as grand is a pretty hard sell. Uh, the Kiln Fiend pick right here was probably the loudest yell between Sean and Craig. That's so weird. That's so weird. <laughs> this card's fine. I'm not saying it's bad. It's like unplayable, but it's weird there's two players that are both uh, doing this exact thing. Yeah, and neither one of them seems to want to pivot either. Sure. Which is just making both of their decks worse. Yes. Okay, Isochron Scepter and Boomerang okay. is a classic combo. And I guess this is the it. You're going to put a Boomerang in your green-black deck to slide under Isochron Scepter for no other reason. <laughs> Although Tendril's out of Carlos. Okay, second one done. We haven't seen any red from Carlos yet, right? So is there a Burning Wish available? Okay, Xander's launch. Yeah, he's also got the... um, uh, The... Breach. Underworld Breach early. Yeah, okay, so this is probably going to be... Keep one of the Wincons in the main deck, one on the board, then have Burning Wish to grab it, I would assume. But we'll see. Although, Probably. Although Brain Freeze... Brain Freeze is a sorcery, right? I think so. No, it's an instant. But Oh, it is an instant. That's fine. Just run Death Wish. But Brain Fre- be, a, be a real man. But Brain Freeze is all, also has the utility of, oh, I can mill myself to True. make a, a whole bunch of loops. Yeah, I mean, you can just run Brain Freeze in the main, Tendrils in the board, and then have Wish for that, plus like a discard spell and a bunch of other useful things. I like this. Lutri out of George will be fun. Yep. I like the Lutri. This is a good wasteland and a good veil. This is a good round for both of them. You're in. It's been revealed. Roger, Roger, <laughs> tell us what's up. Now, the real question is will, will Roger do the actual yo yo deck? Oh, I ha- you have to assume. Oh, 16 cards. Like, Yorian is not good enough with the other cards he's drafted unless it explains a deck that you don't need. Like, you, you, you just are going to play every card. I also like that we get uh, three companions in this round. I like. Yeah, Luris is very set up. I mean, there's no cards that shut it down so far. And it's at its best in this round. for reversal is cute. I like that card Did, for Sean. Which one? 
uh, Narset's reversal. Yeah, that card's cool. Um, I haven't seen it really do its thing, uh, but like I haven't seen it do broken things, right? But it's it can it's like a good counter spell. Although I'm not a big fan of book burning out of Craig. No, book burning is very bad. It, it's okay. Huh. Like it's <laughs> it could be two mana. I think it's six damage. Uh, it'll be but... two mana, whatever thing doesn't matter, is what it always is, because that's how those cards always work. Yeah. Uh, I think the only one of those cards that's actually playable is Browbeat. No, there's the new one. There's the one with, um, what's the new flashback where you have to, like, discard a card or something to cast it? That one was playable in Standard. I have no idea if it's good anymore, but I don't know what Bandit's talent is, so that has too many words on it. But it says somebody discards a card or something. Okay, cool. So they... Yeah, it's what... Yeah. It's a pretty pretty good little saga out of um, Bloomboro. Yeah, it's in a class, but I, I guess it's just uh, two mana, they discard a card is the starting point, and then from that point, it, there's other stuff. Okay, Hero Blade Hold. Hero Blade Hold is a card Mason and I have gone on long conversations about, about how that card should be the baseline of a VRD playable card. It's like a very good card that doesn't, uh, doesn't ask anything of you, and it wins the game in two hits. It's just like, Mm -hmm. it's a perfectly fine thing and it's too slow to really be good at this point but um, it, there's a lot of decks that can't beat a hero of blade hold especially since it's a 3-4 yeah it's, it's well it's a lot bigger than a 3-4 the first time it attacks it attacks for 7 and then the second time it attacks for infinite so you win the game <laughs> alright Ben Ben picks up Fable that's a good Fable I, Craig and Sean would have wanted those cards a lot earlier. Uh, the Matron's fine to grab now. Workshop is good from Cassidy. I like this. The Ashiok, I am not a huge fan of, but I think that's just overall, like, my... I don't understand the pivot to black. And this Esper Sentinel feels like it's, like, really kind of where things are starting to go muddled for me. It's like, are you a reanimator deck? Are you a blue-white control deck? Are you... A like yeah. pivoting into a Thassa's Oracle consult combo deck where you're like a control deck that combos off with Thassa's Oracle and Demonic Toot consult, or are you like a mid range creature deck? Like, the, George feels like he's a deck that wants Wrath of God over an Esper Sentinel, and I don't understand trying to play a deck that does both of those things. So, right here, the, these two picks for Craig I actually made because he had to go take care of something mm -hmm. real quick, and I just helped him out a little bit. Get Gave him a couple dual lands. Yeah. Because he's got Kiki Jiki and Cryptic already. So dual lands are his friend. Oh, he has Cryptic as well. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, Craig, Craig, this is the classic. You're walking into a VRD for the first time. You're always going to undervalue lands and overvalue playable spells. And then you'll end up with a deck that can't actually cast its spells because you have too many main deck spells and no lands to cast them. Manamorphosis is, is a wild one. I guess it just triggers prowess. Um, maybe you can use it to cast Boomerang. Yeah. <laughs> Krosis is Catacombs? That cannot be right. I like this defense grid pick, but Krosis is Catacombs is the cave thing, right? Layers? Yeah, layer. Yeah. I, I think it's just because it was a land for all three colors that Carlos wants. And... Yeah, but like Elaine had that Kest deck that ran, what was the one from uh, Shards? Just like Comes into play tapped, it taps for all three colors. You don't have to do nonsense with layers. Okay. All right, so we lost Kevin's video, uh, but we are all here, and uh, everything is perfect. This just means Kevin needs to talk more so we can hear that you're still here. <laughs> I'm still here. All right, so we have a Mirage Mirror, uh, which is sweet, great combo card that doesn't get enough love, I think. So props to find uh, that one. Lynn Vala's... A fine, fine pick out of Roger. Yeah. Krinko's fine out of Ben. Roger's deck feels like one that would have a dark, uh, like would have a Black Lotus in it, though, right? Like, there's just a lot of four drops and, like, very expensive cards that Roger has not even a Mox to cast, right? Started with Athalia, am I right? Or did he get no, the his first pick was Chalice. Chalice, that's right. It's Chalice instead of Pearl. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got the, the next Safari out of George. See, that's a win con. That's, that's the one that he needed earlier if he was in that blue-white deck. Um, the Mirage Mirror makes me think that Cassidy's going to be pivoting into green for uh, Thespian Stage combo, but we'll see if that's true or not. 
Well, so I actually pointed Mirage Mirror out to her. Okay. And pretty much it's essentially a, a redundancy for any combo you're trying to do. It also has a fun benefit of shutting down Time Vault combo. No, it doesn't actually. I was going to say it shuts down Time Vault combo because you could interrupt and add one, but they just add one again afterwards. So that actually does nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, Skirt Kirk Processor is great. It does the combo thing. Cataclysm feels really weird in a creature deck. Like, I get, I, yeah. I get it's a third copy of Armageddon, kind of, but. So, and then the Legend Shredder pick was a. Another pick I made for Craig because he was still taking care of business. That's a good pick. And then the Thing in the Ice, I also gave him. Yeah, Thing in the Ice is fine. I think he kind of already has enough creatures in that space, but I can see, like, it's obviously not going to be bad. I don't like this Grape Shot. It seems like it's going to be just kind of like a Grape Shot for three, like a fair Grape Shot. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it, is it better than Lightning Strike? Almost assuredly not. Uh, Team Battle Rage can go nuts, so that card is I can totally see. Especially with um, the dragon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bile Blight. This feels like I someone who has drafted in standard when that was the round, because that doesn't really see much play outside of there. I guess it's good against goblins, yeah. though. Like, Especially with the crank up pick. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, I can see where he got there. Counterbalance out of Roger feels a bit... Bit of a stretch, but if you're doing the Yorian thing, why not? I don't... Yeah, I don't know. Let's see. It. I'm waiting to see whoever picks up Tyvander's Crusade. Is that how, you, how do you spell that card? Which card? Tyvander's Crusade. It's like a terrible anti-goblins card. Oh, Tividar's Crusade. Oh, Tividar. There's no, there's no end. I believe it's T-I-V-I-D-A-R. Yeah. I feel like that'd be a great one for Roger. Over Cataclysm. Teferi's Protection is fun for George. Yep, there's the Teferi's Protection balance combo. So again, a good win con. The Thieving Skydiver I also like. That's going to be incredible against Cassidy and playable against most people. Mm -hmm. And there's the Red Cap combo. I don't like this Heroic Intervention very much in an event at all. Um, I think that... I also just don't value those cards very highly. I recognize that other people think they're good, so I'm not going to say that that's wrong, but... It's just not a card that I so, ever reach for. Yeah, ben was just asking for an answer to all the all the board wipes, and I suggested heroic intervention to him. Yeah, I mean it does do that. It stops it stops them from messing with you. I don't know because that that that's the main way most decks are going to try and mess with them. So it's true. Inkwell Nexus is a good pickup for Roger though. That stops Casty from grabbing it and kind of doing the dump Ravager onto Nexus. I, yep. I don't know. If Roderick is going to do anything with it, though. I mean, I, I think right now the best he's got is the um, Aspirant to slowly make it one bigger every turn. Yeah, yikes. Beseech the Mirror is great. Uh, does Carlos have the zero drops? Has He has a LED, presumably, and Lotus Petal? I believe so, yeah. And Mana Crypt? Okay. And I mean, yeah, Beseech the Mirror also just gets your Time Vault, so you can do the combo that way, too. No keys yet. So, Craig picks the third... Blast. Uh, yeah. The bl yeah, the third Blast. <laughs> and, and Sean uh, doesn't, it does take a Blast, but doesn't grab the Blue Elemental Blast. Well, no, I, bl I think I think that's Craig's third one? No, I think Ben got one. Ben got the Pyro, and Craig got the Hydro and Reb. The ah, Beb is still out. Is... Lorien Revealed is a great pickup here. Carlos is just grabbing all these cards that no one else is taking that are incredible. Like George. George would want that Lorien Revealed. War Chief, so Ben's but just I... kind of doing his thing. Casty grabs a Manifold Key. That's going to be great for getting Blightsteel through. Um, mm -hmm. But it's also a card that Carlos now needs to worry about grabbing the uh, what's what's the other one the Voltaic key. Yeah, but and I know Cassidy like Manifold key more than Voltaic key because of the hey I can make a creature unblockable. Oh yeah, Manifold key is strictly better in every way except for the art. 
So it's like it's just a better card. Uh, I know another card she was looking at that did the, a similar role was the um, Sonic Screwdriver <laughs> from the Doctor Who set. That card does do that. It's not quite as good though. This map, this also Fox Amber feels pretty bad to me. Yeah. Like I, I get I that mean, it works with Jace and it works with uh, all these walkers and stuff, but is that really the time when you need a Mox Amber? Right. Okay. I just think it's going to be too slow. Yeah. To be used. I, and that, okay. there's Carlos grabbing a key. Yep. You want to? Re- I mean, there's plenty of other options in case where you get sniped, right? You could always do the Rel Zarek thing. You could do the Galvanic key. Like, there's a million options for it. Uh, you could even do yeah. use that one Teferi Sunset card. Um, but it's nice to or have even one mana ones. Or a bunch of different te- Tezzeret options. Sure. And you know what? These are, these keys are great because you can get them with Urza's Saga, which is still available. I mean, there's, there's a lot of cards <laughs> that are still available. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, and there's there's the bed. Nice. Okay. So okay. Craig, Craig has three out of the four. And Sean did take the Desperate Ritual. So we are seeing a pivot into some something to justify this scrape shot. It's obviously good with prowess stuff as well. They're both fighting over blue red lands. It's like we're in Chicago. Island of Wak Wak. Man, I love that card. Uh, I cut it from my uh, from my five color lands EDH, uh, but it is not playable in regular EDH, let alone VRD. I, I I think it's more cute than anything. Yeah. It just ends up with like it shuts off like Merit Lodge and almost nothing else. Yeah. I like Spell Queller. Yeah, the Faithless Loon is also fine. See, the Spell Queller, this, this feels like we're... If I were Roger and I were saying I am in blue-white, where I would want to be going? I'd want to go in Spirits and just do like, I don't know, whatever that three mana, two, two, that gives everything Hexproof is. Like, do that guy and do the whole Spirits yeah. thing. Muxus is a necessary card. Cyber Drive Awakener is a cool one. That's one that we don't always see, but uh, we feel I've seen. We saw somebody do Tinker into Cyber Drive. I think it was, this has to be a no. Brandon Brandon thing from back in the day. I think. Probably, I'm not a huge fan of the Archmage's Charm out of George in a three color deck. I like it a lot in a blue white deck. I I like it less in Esper. Yeah, me too. Mental Missteps a late one though. There that that has to be super late for this card. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of good options for it. Yeah. Usually ninth pick, now it goes 32nd, yeah. Ooh, reshape. No, transmute artifact still exists, Cassidy. Someone, please, <laughs> take you back to Alpha. <laughs> no, this is the thing Eric Levine did the exact same thing, um, and we have never ceased to make fun of him for it. He might get hired by Watsy, but he will never escape the reach of her shape. <laughs> Frantic search for Carlos, uh, good it- pick. It could also just be that Transmute Artifact is very expensive, like, in real money. Yeah. So it's not on a lot of people's radar. Totally. No, I, I, <laughs> this is not me saying that anyone is bad or, like, it, there's lots of good reasons why you wouldn't think of Transmute Artifact. But Matt is uh, thinking of I'm Tabernacle, not... so I hope we get to see, uh, what's that land that pumps out zombies? Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead. That's, that's what this makes me think, but even though it was assuredly not. It also looks like Sean's trying to pivot more into like a burn route. Yeah, weird. That lava spike, chain lightning, fire blast. Okay, so blue red prowess burn, but then there's also like desperate ritual. Like I would expect to see like desperate ritual into Lelia or something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. A couple of removal spells out of Craig. But see, like if you're gonna go burn, then oh. why do you take a braid? I guess you need it's... your answer, Cassidy. Yeah, it's just a good utility card. Uh, but there's, there's like, Shatter. What's, what's the one that... It's the Shatter and it deals them three. So, like, if you're going to be doing the Burn thing, take that card instead of a Braid. Oh, but a Braid also can hit hit creatures, so it's good against, like, Roger and Ben as well. Yeah, but you can't run a Braid. You, if you're doing that, then you, you're running it in your main deck, and you don't have enough space in your main deck for all these cards. Yeah. This is, this is I think, the uh, trap people fall into. They're like, I'm going to take the, the good artifact removal spell. And it's like, yeah, that's a good artifact removal spell for the main deck but you don't have enough space in your main deck, and there are better cards that you truly only need to care about artifacts that you can bring in. So take those cards for the sideboard and leave a braid out of the main deck. Well, like you and I were talking about before the event, 
uh, about how many people we thought were going to fall into that trap, and you you were thinking at least six. I said seven. seven. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to be one person that will kind of realize it and draft a sideboard first. But almost everybody always overdrafts main deck. It's not it's not a thing that's one person is doing wrong. Uh, uh, Tasha's hideous laughter. First of all, Brima's is sweet. I love that card. Tasha's hideous laughter is sweet. Uh, this is one that I always draft and I play it and it wins me games a lot, but I'm always confused and it feels like it's never correct. Um, even it, people think it's a mill card and it's just not. It's an anti combo card that you cast yeah. and Carlos loses half of his deck and concedes. Like you don't play this. You, you can you can play it in a mill deck if you want to, but it's just a it's a fine card for just blowing away the consult deck usually. But George took the consult yeah. deck this time. Uh, but no, it's still going to get storm. Cassidy took Karn Scion, but still has not taken the Karn, uh, the good Karn. Okay, we've got to reanimate, so mm -hmm. looks like leaning a little bit more into the backdoor reanimator package we talked about earlier. Totally, yeah, discard the card out of their hand, and then either use animate they had to reanimate to bring it back. Young Pyro's fine in this burn style deck. Uh, the mm -hmm. turnabout means in the combination of Gush, Turnabout, and Frantic Search, I think I see what Carlos is doing, and it has means that he's not going to be doing Doomsday. He's going to be doing High Tide. Yep, and he he knows he's the only one in his lane. So. Yeah. I mean, that means that Time Spiral needs to make a call at some point here, right? That's not taken? Uh, I believe it has not. Yeah, I mean, if, I, if you're sitting in Craig's seat and you see these picks, I think you think about whether you want Time Spiral in your deck, because you can probably take a third wheel. Or oh wait, fourth wheel at this point. Eidolon of the Great Revel is a good pick here, though. That really shuts down Carlos. I think it's yeah. like a necessary yeah. card, but I think that you probably also want... What's that one weird red curse that uh, makes them roll There's dice? the high tide. Nice, there it is, good. Uh, Maddening Hex. Yeah, Maddening Hex, I think, is even better than Eidolon. I mean, it's a card that's put in a lot of work for me. Yeah. Opalescence feels way too cute to me. Yeah, I don't. He, like, there's how many? He's got what? One other enchantment, if that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's gonna go to Ley Lines or something. I don't get it. This glimpse feels very odd to me as well. Um, I guess. Yeah, no, I was gonna say you can't even put it underneath the Isochron Scepter. Like, I, I don't know what what you're trying to win with this glimpse. I'm not sure either. I think against the average deck, milling them ten cards is going to be a lot better for them than it will be for you. Mm -hmm. Choking Sands well, is a, a weird grab here. The rest of this all makes sense to me. This is just a like Stone Rain, right? I think so. Yeah, it's a destroy non-swamp. Huh. This feels like a... This feels kind of like I... A bad sideboard card? Yeah, maybe, because there's also... What's the, what's the black black? Destroy a swamp. Or destroy a land. Uh Sinkhole. sinkhole, yeah. Like, sinkhole exists if you really want that effect, but also I don't know why you want this effect. The remand I like. That's the remand is good. And Baral really wants that remand, especially... Oh, no, I was going to say, I, I thought Baral was in Sean's deck, but because Baral, Baral and remand can do silly things with, like, putting a storm card back in your hand and discarding another card. Um, although, the Knight Exemplar out of Roger, I'm meh. So I don't think he's got that. He's got what? You're still Paladin and maybe two other knights right now? I don't even know what this card does. Okay, so it gives something it, to it's a, Yeah. Yeah, it's a knight lord. A Brimaz has to be a knight, right? Or is he a king? I think he might be a warrior. Soldier? Okay, yeah, who knows? Oh, he's a soldier? I don't look at creatures. <laughs> I really like this Urobrask, though. Urobrask is great. But again, Urobrask would be great in Sean's deck. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> these these two players are both drafting the exact same deck, and I do not understand any part of it. So now, here I actually convinced Sean to splash into white because fourth is just too good of a card, and he's got fourth's incredible. So like, he, so he took the triome. He already has the lotus, yeah. and I think he's got at least one fetch land, so he can grab the triome easily. Uh, let's see. We have Rogan Triome. There was a Manamorphos I saw. There is uh, Arid Mesa. There is... Whole Breacher can do some work. Uh, 
Rag, uh, Ragavan and Black Lotus. So there's uh, three real sources and two kind of sources. Yeah, pl- pl- plenty of ways to add to the one white mana. Totally. Yeah, fourth and fourth healing is just ridiculous. Now, I I will say, though, that after a little bit, Sean did tell me afterwards he won every single game he cast. <laughs> That's usually how that works, though. Um, I feel like from Roger's picks in the past, like, five picks, I can isolate exactly when he played Magic at a competitive level. It was probably 2012 to 2015. Because that's also when I played Magic, and he's drafted all the cards that I loved playing against in those days. You're not wrong. Yeah. That's, like, a fun thing about VRD. You kind of get a glimpse into people's history because of the cards that they reach for, like Mirror Crusader and uh, Brimaz and... uh, what is it? The the four mana hero blade hold. Like these are all cards that are were really good at that time. Sphinx is revelation. There it is, another one. It's really funny. But I I also think it's funny that this is nowhere near any of the other decks he was considering. That is funny. Carlos, uh, you don't need three of the win cons. Get that out of there. Empty the warrants doesn't do anything. Um, I, I do like the supreme verdict from George. I would like it a lot more if there wasn't an Esper Sentinel and uh, a Strange Black Splash, though. Yeah. But Supreme Verdict, like, Rafine's Tower and Supreme Verdict are both great great cards at this point, Where from where he's sitting. Esper Panorama, is that... The Panoramas, are there weird, like, Tudor lands? Or am I off on uh, that? The, they're the common fetch lands that tap for colorless. Yeah. Okay. I feel like these are worse than just the enter the battlefield tapped try lands. But, but maybe you need tutors. I mean, if you, if you need to be able to shuffle, right? Does he is he Matt home with the brainstorms? No, Matt's in the mono black. No, Dr. Carlos has all, all the good cantrips. Okay. So we, out of Sean, we've got Plateau, just another white source, oh, and then dude. another fetch land. Yeah, Sean is set for this fourth. He could even grab some more white cards if he wants. Mystic Sanctuary is a good is a really good pickup from Craig there. Pestilence rats. This is, did he mean pit crypt rats? I think that was probably the intention. Because this card, but was not was not realized until yeah down the line. Any card that says for example on it is probably not VRD playable. Um, and like the, I don't like the electricery here out of Craig. I think it was just uh, hey, I played this card. And it's not. I mean, that's not even going to stop anything Goblins is doing. Like it might, it might pick off a Skirk Prospector on turn one or something, but it's not going to be good once they start rolling. It's good to get. It feels reactionary to the empty of the warrants. Like it stops that one card of Carlos's. Sure. Totally right. And he got his main deck done. Now he's looking for sideboard cards. And Electricity was very good in the sideboard and is very good in Popper. So I, I get. I can totally see it. I like this Urza's Bauble. Uh, Bitter Triumph's fine. I don't know what this Gifts Ungiven is doing. I don't think Carlos is going to reach for the, the Gifts Reanimator package, but maybe. It might just be a fair Gifts, like, play in Vintage like it's 2010. Right, yeah. I mean, oh, I guess, yeah, with Yawgmoth's Will, you can just do that, right? You can... If you already have the Yogwell in hand, you can just use it as a, a double in tomb. Waterlog teaching is sick. I love this pick. I also like this Cavern of Souls. Um, and Sculpting Seal. All, all these all these cards are good. Silver Blade is another one. Similarly, like Roger's doing his thing, right? Like it would be really good if he had a Black Lotus uh for all these cards, but beyond that, like he's in his lane. Pack rat. That's what has to be what he meant instead of pestilence rats. Because pack rat is a great pick. Yeah, why? why? Delve cards aren't good together. <laughs> like, people should stop that. <laughs> yeah. But you have, to, you have to draw these cards the exact right order for that even to be true. And at that point, it's like, it's okay. You still have to have 11 mana worth of things. Factor Fiction is fine, but kind of misreads the speed of the format generally, I think. Yeah, I don't even know what this card is. Oh, okay. That card's very bad. 
Target player shuffles their graveyard into their library. What does that even do? It's an anti reanimator card. It's a sorcery, though. This seems terrible. I like the Mishra's Wobble. That's a good pick. Although Mishra's Wobble doesn't feed a lot of the prowess stuff. Like, he doesn't have true prowess. He has things like Kiln Fiend. So Mishra's Wobble doesn't feed a lot of those. Uh, burglar rat. So I guess we're kind of revealing the end game then. We're just going to take all the two mana rats that make them discard a card. Sure. Yeah, but it does things with Turker. It does. It does like there's a lot of like discard matters um, with that Davriel and other things. So like I can see this being these being good cards. That is a super late grief. Uh, I like the grief even though you can't cast it. Like there's no black cards in your deck, George. Bitter triumph. That's fine. That's a great combo card. I mean, that's this is the Grumgully uh, Madcap combo. For anyone that has not seen it, you have a Skirk Prospect or something else. You have you need a sack outlet, and then you just go nuts and blow them out with Persist and Grumgully. This is a classic EDH combo, but it's also VRD playable. Entreat the Angels is okay. That's just a fair card, right? Uh, it'd also be pretty good in George's deck. Shellbox's a good pick, though. Right. Yeah. Okay, Paradise Mantle. That card doesn't do anything, right? There's no combo with Paradise Mantle that we've seen so far. Yeah, okay, there we go. But, I mean, that... Hold on, what's, what is the combo? The combo is just that you get to untap and tap your creature over and over. But it doesn't do anything else, right? Because you have to use the mana to, to untap it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I'm excited to see what else happens there. Yeah, what are, what are these uh, what are these forks doing for Sean? Is this like you kill my thing, I kill your thing? Like what what else is it trying to do? I guess it kind of counters a time walk if you squint really tight. Well, I mean, it's a. Oh, yeah, once you say that, that's true. Okay, yeah, so this the, the combo for anyone that's not super aware, if you have Palancron and five islands in play, uh, or sorry, if, if you have if you have High Tide and you have five islands, Palancron goes infinite because you cast it, you untap your islands, then you can use, uh, I think you actually only need, three. no, yeah, sorry, it's five, right? Seven plus four is 11. You need six islands. You need six islands, and then you can go infinite with it. Or five islands and two other lands, whatever. Um, nice. We're not seeing a crop rotation yet, so it's kind of just the fair game. I don't know how she gets it. Sure. Yeah, okay. You can Kozilek's command to find the other one. Like, scrying 10 and finding it's pretty good. Time Spiral, yeah, Time Spiral I like a lot more than Palancron. I'm not sure you sure about that one. Stern Scolding's going to pick up for George, too. That card's going to be really good against this field. Is this one of those plus one plus one cards that's not playable? Yeah, that seems really bad. It seems like you're going to be opening yourself up for a two for one. Um... And you might you might hit them like four mana for what five extra damage per turn.
Right, but that doesn't work with the freed from the real or anything, right? Am I missing something? This is the fire run. This is the original one. When you draw a card. Yeah, so it doesn't care about untapping. I'm very confused. I mean, does he have any cards that tap for two mana that the freed from the real goes off with? And there's nothing that cares about tapping or untapping. Kiki Jiki, you can make copies of things and untap them. Yeah, I don't I don't see what most of these cards do. Okay. A uh, chain of vapor is good. It's the best card in class. Um possibly the weird like give them a gift card might be better at this point, but they're close. Yeah, it's a great. That's a heads up one against Cassidy. This is another um, pump all your dudes. Yes. All right. Yeah. So some card advantage, oh, and yeah, that seems fine. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that seems very playable in his deck. It doesn't seem incredible, but it seems it's a win con and it's playable. Sure. Yeah, I like Auntie's Hovel. I like this Werb of Mention. Meticulous Archive. That's just this, that's the Surveil Land. That card's fine. Phantasmal Image. Okay, we're cloning something. I mean, that's not a bad card. I just don't know what you're taking it in for. I guess you can bring it in against creature decks and it's, it gets underneath the Lurus Shield. This Palancron has confused me more and more. The more now that you pointed that out, I just am very confused by Palancron. Archive trap. This feels Matt. It feels like he just like saw. Oh, I can do some mill stuff, and then threw a few mill cards into the deck. But that doesn't really work. Like you got to go all the way if you're going to do it. Glorious end. That's a cute end of the draft card. Uh, fallowed, fallow sage. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's. Uh, no, you draw a card. You may draw a card when it untaps. You're thinking of wake thresher, which is a good card. I like wake thresher a lot because it combos with basalt monolith. Um, this is a four mana card that fits into a three card combo. That's one I like less. But I'm sure I'm, like it can win. Right. I'm not saying any of these cards can't win. It's more just the speed of VRD generally makes it hard for this kind of thing to work out decks um we got to see some pretty cool decks get drafted here uh by people that have exposed for the first time obviously like that means that we have a lot of different things that appeared um we had two blue red decks that were smashing into each other we had this uh matt slash pete deck that is largely discard with a little bit of mills thrown in and a cool reanimator theme that i think actually like could have leaned in a few different directions there we have Carlos on about the best storm deck you can hope for coming out of this deck uh, with a high tide splash. Uh, Roger on a Yorian deck that apparently did not play Yorian as a companion. Um, ben on goblins that missed out on the Kiki Jiki combo but still managed to get other combos and just being goblins. Cassidy on the mono brown that is running through blue. Uh, so lots of lock pieces but more of an aggro deck. And George on this uh, blue-white deck that ended up splashing into Esper, but at its core, it's a control deck uh, that is very hard to pilot. So uh, we're going to, I'm sure, talk about that all. But let's start on the left here. Craig, he kind of had a bunch of combos that got thrown in here. There's the Niv-Mizzet combo, there's the Fallow Sage combo, uh, but there's also just being able to cast Ledger Shredder and Thing in the Ice and cast a few spells, prowess your way through the game and kill them, right? Yeah, I, I think Craig had... Just the uh, Splinter Twin, Kiki Jiki, Pestermite, and um, Exarch Package main. Yep. Oh, so he didn't and even play the other combos main deck. I, I think he took him as just, oh, you stopped the, this, I have a way to get around you kind of thing. Okay. But I don't know how often he brought him in. Interesting, okay. 
Yeah, I mean, it, I, I can see that. It's really hard. This, this is the thing we always talk about is like how many players are going to overdraft their main deck. And we always speculate. The thing I always speculate about is I, I think didn't get to see too many of his games. Yeah, I think but... I think it's about seven players out of eight will almost will uh, overdraft their main decks. But and you and I were talking beforehand. You were figuring seven people probably would do that. Exactly right. Uh, and and they did. I so. think that's about where we ended up. Yeah, I, I think fewer actually. I think it's probably like five. But yeah, there's this. Uh, it's definitely really hard to avoid when you're first starting out. Um, so yeah, how did how did Craig's deck come through? You said that he uh, played the a Splinter Twin deck, didn't really have a way to tutor for the pieces, but uh, had a prowess like beat down backup plan, right? Yeah, he, Craig unfortunately went oh seven. That's brutal. But I, I think part of that was just again too many mainboard cards, not enough sideboard cards, and just some bad variants. I think he went to game three, three or four times. Totally. Okay, that makes sense. So he, this this deck feels better than an 07. This feels like it, it probably could, should have gone 2-5. Um, but, I mean, a deck that should go 2-5 will go 07 some percentage of the time. But this this is, I don't think, a deck to be ashamed of. It's not like a train wreck that is unplayable. Yeah. And just the, and the, just the biggest problem for Craig was fighting with with Sean the whole, the whole time totally. for cards and neither of them blinking. Yeah, I was thinking about that a little bit. It's like the fact that they both, um, it's their first time playing, they probably came in with, here's a list of cards I'm going to take. And it's really hard to pivot from that point, right? If you two are both in the exact same lane and you don't have a backup plan ready, uh, it's really hard. It's really hard. So I, I think that's more likely to happen in a first timer's draft. I think a lot of times when you are more experienced, you have here's the deck I want to draft. Even if you do come in with something like that, you have kind of, all right, here are my fallbacks, right? It's like, I'll start with this shell and then I have a few pivot points from there, uh, like almost a tree of possibilities from the first like 10 picks. <laughs> all right. So Sean, yeah. let's hear about Sean's deck. Uh, so Sean ended up going two to five, but again, fighting with Craig for everything. Just, did neither of them any favors. Totally. I mean, uh, he started with Black Lotus, uh, ended up in this, like, prowess-type deck, and then it, it moved, though, right? Like, this deck uh, moved in a bunch of different places. It kind of started off uh, just Ragavan a little aggro, and then went into Wheels, I think, after he saw that nobody was taking Narset, and then moved back mm -hmm. to uh, this prowess deck for a little while. Yeah, he, and he ended up kind of on, like, a Merktide burn almost Marktide burn list with um, yeah. splashing for fourth. That's true. The fourth Aerolingus uh, was a great pickup. So uh, thank you to you for shouting that one out to him. Mm -hmm. Obviously going in around 11 normally and here it went super late. Yeah, 38. 37, yeah. But he did say he won every game where he cast it. It feels like that's what happens with this card usually. <laughs> you, you have a lot of mana, you cast it, and you win the game immediately. It's hard to come back. Um, I did catch one of his games where, on the play, mm -hmm. he used Black Lotus on turn two to cast it for three. <laughs> That's just so mean. It's like, maybe they have one creature in play, but probably not uh, at that point. Right. Oh, man, that's brutal. Oh, yeah, and 2-5 is very good. Like, I tell people to aim for a 3-4 when they do their first VRD, uh, and, like, that should be your goal, because you're not going to you're not gonna win it out if you're playing experienced people. So, like, a 2-5 is a super respectable, like, that's not the goal, but it is very close to the goal. I mean, it's better than my first VRD. My first one, I went 1-6. Exactly, right? Like, that's, that is kind of the default, <laughs> I think, for a lot of people. It's... The first one is all about like, oh, this is how the format works. Not, it's not the place to try to really be consistent and win. Yeah, um, it's a super different format. All right, so Matt and Pete, I uh, had this starting off mono black deck that had a cool animate deads package. Went into green um, to get some ramp, and then also went into blue for the mill package. And I mean, the mill, the mill part seems kind of like there's enough cards here to sub it in against the matchups it's good against. Did you see if he ever uh, got that one going? Um, yeah, he, I saw saw one game against Ben where um, 
then got hit with an archive trap right after a goblin recruiter. Oh, so you set up your entire combo, get your best cards on top, and then get them all blown away, and probably just only have yep. lands left afterwards. Yep. That's painful. Oh, man. I like to see that, though. It's nice to punish goblins a little bit. But, yeah. Pete ended up going 2-5. Uh, okay, that's but very reasonable. He found out he was going to be replacing Matt 30 minutes before we were supposed to start drafting. That's so painful. I mean, I've been there. You basically walk in with no plan, and you're tired. You're not in the right headspace. You haven't done any preparation. Right. It's really bad. Uh, which explains so he, why he kind of he went just back kind of to, defaulted to yeah he went back to the deck similar to what before. he did in uh, presents one and two totally yeah it makes sense I do think there's like a cool this this like pack rat package has some legs to it I feel like there's a deck that runs discard spells pack rat burglar rat and like all these like dumb little two mana discard cards um, with discard payoffs like I think there's something there I don't know if it runs Turgrid, but I feel like running Davriel there's something there's something to it yeah. And you can also look at the various eight rack win conditions too. Yeah, totally. Right. I think like you you probably want I don't know if you want Ashia. I don't know. I, I could brainstorm this room for a little while, but I think there's something there. Yeah, I I agree. There's definitely something there, but we're Pete's not deck isn't quite there yet. No, it definitely needs mind twist. Right. Like that's a I think just a card that slipped mind. No pun intended. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'd love I'd love to sit down and be like I'm gonna try to build the best VRD version of this deck that you can reasonably get and see what it looks like. Um, how did Carlos do? This is an incredible looking storm deck. I think we, you and I both agree that high tide is a tough sell on this one. Um, but it, uh -huh. like, it's a time vault deck that is pretty okay in that realm, but also just very good at storming. Uh, Carlos actually ran the table and went 7-0. Oh, that's amazing. I love to see it. Um, uh, part of that is he yeah. Did, did his homework, had a plan coming in, and no one bothered him, so he got everything he wanted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's pretty pretty ridiculous. Of the people I did know, Carlos was probably the top spot as far as skill as a player. Yeah, and that matters a lot. I feel like people undervalue that when you're talking about VRD. People kind of look at the cards that are picked and like, which deck is the best? And that's kind of like the way to frame this. But wins come down, I mean, I think about as much to the, the play skill as it does to the deck that you have. Obviously, like, it's very mm -hmm. hard to pilot a, like, trash pile to a good victory. And it's really hard to uh, lose with the best deck at the table. So, like, there's some amount that the deck matters there. But I think people overvalue the cards and undervalue the play. Yeah. That said, this deck is very strong as well. Um, I don't know. We, we, we've quibbled about it. We can talk about things we disagree with. But I, I think that for the most part, this is like, it makes sense that it's 7-0. I, I don't think that there's any deck that deserves 7-0, really. Like, I think that most things should lose one in a seven-round tournament. Um, but mm -hmm. still, it's it's awesome when it happens. Um, Roger's deck. This this one, you said he didn't actually run Yorin as a companion. But the rest of the deck, I mean, it could be. And there's a lot of cards you can sub in and out. How did he end up against yeah, the table? Um, Roger finished up in fourth at four and three. Okay. Uh, four and three. I mean, that's good, especially with this deck. This, this doesn't have a ton of interaction other than the hate bears once you get them on the table. It doesn't have like, it doesn't have the combo protection, it feels like. Yeah, but at the same time, sometimes you just got to beat down the dudes. Oh, totally. And there's, there's, like, I love drafting the big complicated control decks and storm decks, uh, but the decks I lose to are the ones that cast a, like, Ragavan on turn one and then a two and a two two on turn two. It's just like it's very hard to, to beat that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, I really I like the Stoneforge uh, direction on this, and I feel like there's like a lot here and it's mono like near mono white. Obviously this is uh blue white, but near mono white gives you a ton of flexibility in the cards you take against the field. It's just like really hard to um it's hard yeah. for me to imagine drafting that deck because there's so many options, right? It's like is this two mana two two better than this other two mana two two? This one hits graveyards a little bit. This one slows down particular right. artifacts. It's just like how do you how do you even come about building a deck like that? It's just it's way it requires somebody smarter than me. <laughs> uh, or and, just so, yeah. maybe maybe not necessarily someone smarter, just a different brain. Yeah, somebody willing to do combat math mostly. Um, <laughs> but no, this this deck's sweet. Um, it also drafts all the cards that I liked drafting when I was playing competitively, like Brewmouse and stuff like that. Um, but Ben, let's hear about these goblins. 
Um, ben finished up in second at six and one. Nice. Good job, Ben. But he, all, I also believe he had more game threes than anyone with, okay. I think, five. So that uh, that six one could have been a, a two five, is what you're saying? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's hard. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you get the wins you get. So I, I respect yep. it. Uh, he he def definitely missed the Kiki Jiki, but he's still got quite a few people with Grum, Grum Gully. So. Nice. Yeah, but he doesn't play a lot of 1v1. We play a lot of Commander, and like he plays dual decks and stuff like that, but he's, he's not like going into shops grinding FMs. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was a little nervous uh, about kind of how is he going to feel about doing a seven round tournament um, in a 1v1 in a pretty competitive uh, field. Uh, so how do you, yeah, like how, how would he feel about that? But it seems like he held up, so I, I really, I yeah, respect he, him. he did fine. He, he was in good spirits the whole time. That's awesome. And this deck, I mean, it's, any deck that can play Muxus is going to do fine. Uh, but he had the recruiter package, he had the Grumgully combos, as well as just beating people down with all these goblins, right? You crank somebody out, and the yep. game's over. Uh, all right, let's hear about Cassidy. This uh, mono brown package, it's definitely a statement going Soul Ring into Tinker into Talarian. Uh, so Cassidy went 4 3 and beat Rodron Breakers. So she got third. Okay, that's great. Uh, well done. She, she decided to go artifacts because she got advice from a friend of ours who, who she really respects when it comes to magic. Mm -hmm. And he's like, just play brown. So, so many broken brown things. Totally. And she kind of went for a bigger package than, um, like, th there's kind of two main schools once you decide to do just the mono brown thing, right? There's kind of like the lockdown thing, which isn't really VRD mm -hmm. playable, I think. We've, we've like, seen a lot of people try at it, and it just, you don't have the redundancy to be able to pull off a Trinisphere type deck that can rely on, um, on uh, spheres. But the other one that she went way closer to is just, I'm going to cast Arc 1 Ravager and. Uh, I'm going to be leaning really heavy to the ground. So this Patrick Automaton, uh, Archon Ravager, and then even capping out with the Reality Smasher, uh, I think like that's a really solid way to build this deck. She ended up doing yeah, some she... cuter things like Voltaic Construct and Metalworker that I feel like probably aren't needed if you're going to be going the aggro plan, though. Yeah, she uh, wanted to be mostly on, on the aggro deck with the ability to combo hit with tinker sure yeah i love a lot of times it was I just love a tinker win that's a good one tinker blight seal i win totally yeah i, I think it's oh. like that that is a great plan right just having i am going to be killing you on turn four if i don't combo and i'll kill you on turn two if i do yeah and um, she had one game that i saw where she tinkered into blight steel and won without attacking with the blight steel because Did you fling it she had mirage mirror <laughs> which then made a cop into a copy of Blight Steel and swung with that. Nice, I like that. And leave one back for blockers and just to do rubbins. That's funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I like the shell. This is one that I'm always too scared to draft because I feel like somebody else takes your Mox Opal and all of a sudden your deck just, I don't know, it feels like there's a few key cards there that really bump you ahead. And if you end up going head-to-head -head with somebody, it's like, it's way worse than blue-red versus blue-red because there there's a lot of different directions to go. Mono brown versus mono brown. If you both are in the same lane, it's a really tough fight. Um, that and just pretty much all the colors have an answer. True. Yeah, you're definitely walking into big hate out of the boards. Like I think black is the only color that really struggles with artifacts, but black has other ways to deal with the deck. Yeah, and you don't draft mono black anyway. Uh, but yeah, the, the, I think I really like her pivot with the Reality Smasher Thought Knot. I think like that is that is probably the way I would want to take this. Um, you, you, like she could play Urza. She shouldn't have taken Urza Saga, of course. But like there's a I think you want to be base blue and then have the colorless. Feels like a really nice top end of this type of deck. I like it. Good job, Cassidy. But yeah, well, she actually had one game where uh, against Sean where he blood mooned, and it actually made it so she could use her. Uh, um, workshop to cast Thought and Not Seer. Or no, sorry, Reality Smasher. That's disgusting. So like, she's sitting there with a workshop that does nothing and probably a soul ring in play for the color list or something? Yep. Oh, that's super funny. I love it. Just like, oh, you messed up, but that's that blood moon. 
Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like you want to turn off these like massive things like Cyber Driver Awakener. You got to do it. That's funny. Mm -hmm. um, how did George end up? This is a blue white deck that pivoted into Esper uh, and kind of like moved around a little bit, but mostly ended up in control. Yeah, he George went three four. Okay. Uh, that's I mean that's good. That's still like like I said, very good to to get a even like above a two record. And I I think there were just some games where just bad variants for George. Sure. Like probably could have snuck out another win or two somewhere. Yeah, it seems uh, this this deck it, there's 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 like six ways to build this deck. So I, I'd have to actually see his configuration at the end to have an opinion on how it, it is looking. Um, but I think that if you go kind of the like heavy control route that happens to have um, the Thassa's Oracle Demonic Consultation, there's like something pretty solid here. I do think that mana is a, a tough sell on like Archmage's Charm, uh, Tasha's yeah. alongside Shieldred. Um, but whatever. I mean, and like I don't know what the choking stance is doing. I'm I'm interested to hear from him. But I think overall, like this deck has a has a lot of good strength to it. But the idea of playing seven rounds of a control deck after a five round draft or five hour draft sounds brutal. Yeah, he he did say after at the end of the event, if he does one of these again, he will not be playing control. <laughs> That's very reasonable. Uh, it is like, it's the hardest. I don't have the brain cells for this anymore. Yeah, <laughs> people like to talk about how like fancy it is to play Doomsday, and it, to me, playing control is so much harder than that. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that all these decks are like really well put together. Even the, the ones that didn't perform well, it's not like they're just trash piles, right? Like everyone understood the assignment, and it's cool to see people yeah. come in with that. Yep. Um, so, I, I would agree that. It Everyone under, at least understood the assignment. Yeah. Execution might not have been as tight I mean, for some as it was for others. Totally. But especially, like, I mean, people getting tapped at the last minute, and, like, some people are going to have fully prepared lists, and some people are going to be interacted with, right? Like, you might come in with a fully prepared list and then have somebody else sit next to you and draft the same deck. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. This format is super hard. It's really fun, and I'm glad that everyone seemed to be in good spirits throughout. Yeah, every, everyone had a blast. Uh, all eight players said they would happily do one again sometime. Nice. Love to see that. All right, well, I'm excited to see the next one of these you do. Uh, and, yeah, we will... Uh, maybe that one we can stream live and have some commentary on it as it happens. Uh, possibly. Yep. But, yeah, the next one is uh, scheduled for the 16th of November. Okay. Uh, we're still trying to decide if it's going to be draft and matches in one day or draft the night before and matches just matches on saturday oh you know how Somebody much i love the second the players. one it's so much so much easier for everybody you don't need to you don't need to have all your cards sitting around you can just print them print them the night before it's way easier but uh i also think the next one's going to be a little bit interesting and i think just the overall skill level yeah. in the room is going to be higher okay because it it's it's more more people that ha have some tournament experience okay like maybe a, a big event here there and would like do well and like store level events stuff like that totally but yeah this one was like very much still kitchen scheduled table to be eight rookies so yeah this it was cool to see one with like kitchen table players and see what, how they approach the format though so yeah looking forward to it uh gonna check in probably near the end of november and we can we can do it Sounds like a plan. Thanks for doing this.